Good evening, viewers. My name is John. I'm a, I'm a weapon of mass instruction, and I can't fucking stop stuttering, and I ain't getting fucking laid tonight. Um, <laughs> because I'm filming this episode, and instead of hitting freaking some club and trying to get in some chick's pants or freaking whatever. Um, but it's not going to be uh, quite the same as it always has been, where I'm just sitting in front of this psychedelic little fucking wall here and uh, talking about shit. Uh, tonight I'm actually going to be getting up and moving. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, room clearing and house clearing in home defense. Um, now this is something that like you know a lot of people have a lot of different theories on, and I really haven't gotten out there and tested other people's theories too much. Uh, but you know, here's what I have. It's basically uh, you know my Marine Corps training which I am adapting to home defense. And uh, if anybody's read up on military doctrine or if you're in the police or military or SWAT or whatever, um, one thing that they always tell you is, you know, never clear a room one man freaking by yourself. Uh, you always want a buddy on your side. But you really don't have that luxury when you're clearing a your house. All right, so I'm going to take uh, some of the stuff I learned in boot camp, actually, uh, really applies here more than your standard two-man, three-man, four-man room clearing, because you're probably not going to have your buddies on your side, okay? So it's scenario time. You hear a weird sound in the middle of the night, uh, let's say you're just playing video games or whatever, uh, bam, crash, you know, fucking glass break in, uh, and you have no idea what just happened, all right? Usually, if you've memorized those sounds your house makes, uh, those weird sounds will sound really, uh, definitely, like, you know, they're noticeable, and uh, you're definitely going to notice they're there and where they are in the house relative to where you are, okay? Because I could hear something if it's happening in the, in the dining room directly below me. I can I can tell if it's happening in my roommate's room directly below me. I can tell if it's happening over there in the, uh, in the living room. I can usually tell, you know? I've heard stuff in the basement happen, you know? And nothing crazy yet, but, you know, it, try to remember how sounds sound from different parts of your house. All right, so scenario. You just heard a funny sound. You're up. You're getting ready to go. You're grabbing the first weapon at hand. In this case, my Bursa Thunder, uh, Thunder 380cc. And as you can see, the uh, chamber is actually uh, clear. I didn't load around in the chamber for the purpose of this video, okay? So now it's up and out, and you're getting ready to go. Now, the first... Uh, uh, obstacle, I'm going to say, in my house is uh, from my room where I usually am, the uh, staircase. Now, clearing down a staircase is fairly easy, all right? Before you do anything, double check, make sure your weapon is ready to go. In my case, I, I sometimes cock the hammer, I sometimes don't. Really depends on your on your preference and the, the current situation, all right? Um, in this case, I'm going to cock the hammer. I'm going to make sure my finger stays off of the trigger until I'm absolutely ready to fire, all right? If you want to, you can always leave that hammer forward in, in some cases, and then you can always put your finger on the trigger at that point if you've got a stiff double action and you're pretty sure you're not going to you know jerk that trigger by accident, all right? So, that, so here we go. I'm just going to leave it forward in this case. All right, we're ready to go. All right, so going down the staircase, in my situation, what I like to do is I like to pop the corner fast. So I'm going to do that here. Whew. Popping that corner pretty quick, all right? Keeping that gun trained forward. I muzzle target at all times, all right? Now you're gonna pause here, let your uh, heart rate slow down a little bit, all right? Let that adrenaline start flowing through you a little bit, all right? Pay attention to your surroundings, noises, you know, stuff like that, all right? Because as soon as you start moving, especially on a staircase, they're usually creaky, uh, you're gonna give away your location pretty darn quick starting to move through your house, unless you're a fucking ninja, which I'm not. All right, so as you can see, the next step is it's going to cut off to the right, and that's where my dining room is, all right? Uh, so the dining room and then the front door right after that. What I like to do is I'll actually pause midway down the stairs, and I'll cover that door, all right? So that's what I'm going to do now. This is my next step. All right, bam. It took a couple of seconds. It would normally be a little bit quicker for me, or I'd be creepy crawling a little bit. And you'll notice that my pistol is back here. Uh, by us. And the reason for that is uh, I don't want it to be past that banister. Uh, you want to always try to keep control of your weapon. In most cases, it's going to be two-handed grip on the weapon unless you've got, uh, say, a flashlight or something like that. I went and turned on all the lights in the house just to make it easier for you guys to see uh, what I'm doing here. All right, So I'm covering on that door, checking just in case the bad guy broke in that way. He's you know fumbling for the, uh, the lock, in which case you know there's no deadbolt. It's keys only um, on the dead. So you know, he's not going to get in that way, but he might try, um, and he might actually crash through, like, one of the windows and break in that way, so it is fairly secure, excuse me, all right, hopefully this is still working, 
Okay, so we've covered, covered that door. Obviously, there's nothing coming through there. But you still got to check the rest of your house. You can't ignore a sound, especially seeing those those gla those windows are not broken. You know, so it wasn't that. All right, so at this point, I got to come around that corner and get into that blind area where the kitchen is. All right, so what I like to do is I'll immediately pop that weapon over. And it's not completely in a good firing stance right there, but... Um, you know, you want that weapon on your target as quick as you can. In this case, the target is the kitchen, all right? Another quick pause, kitchen is clear, and I'm gonna start pieing the corner here because I'm relatively quiet. I'm not sure how fast I'm going. All right, there we go. Pie in the corner. I'm gonna pause right here. Over this way, I've got the door to my basement. All right, so I'm gonna actually cut in real quick. Take a look down that way, all right? In case they're hiding at the bottom of the stairs, there we go. But you don't want to stay too long there because, in this case, well, hard to see, but I was silhouetted against the uh, kitchen. All right. So again, we're moving on, backing out of there. All right. We're back on the hallway. Quick check at my roommate's room. Doors closed like it always is. Things are okay there. All right. Pop that corner. All right. So just like before, I like to pop it quick, give them less time to react, and me more time. You notice I've got the bathroom door on the right. All right, so before I get into the living room, same thing. Bring that pistol in close, pop it, don't get sucked in. All right, they're not gonna be hiding behind that curtain. You can see behind it very easily. So we're gonna cop them back in. All right, here we go. And pop in that corner again. And I slowed it down a little bit, partly for your benefit, but also part, you know, partly because I wanna make sure on a large room, I know what I'm looking at. We already covered this corner, so you don't want to get sucked in there. Immediately cover the next sector right there. And now I'm going to double check the couch, you know, because even though it's hard to hide behind, somebody could be in there. All right, so that, that was pretty much mostly standard uh, one-man uh, room clearing tactics. Holy shit, my pistol just fell. Good thing it wasn't loaded. Um, so that was pretty much your standard one-man room, room clearing tactics that I learned in boot camp, you know, high in the corner uh, that's standard you want your eye and the muzzle of your gun to be the only things visible to a bad guy give them less of a target it gives you a little bit more time to uh, to, to hit them if you uh, have to um, so sometimes I go slow sometimes I go fast I switch it up um, and, and depending on the size of the room where the next sector of fire is and I know the layout of my house or right, where I live um, and that's something it would behoove you to memorize locations where a bad guy might hide whether it's behind a small couch like that, whether it's uh, inside of the bathroom, behind the curtains, under a bed, whatever the case may be, all right? Uh, memorize as much of your house as possible, the sounds it makes and everything. It makes your job a lot easier, okay? Now, I covered pretty much most of the rooms in my house. I skipped my roommate's room partly for her privacy. She's not there right now, but um, generally speaking, I mean, the door's going to make noise. Nobody's going to be able to open it or close it quietly. The door in the bathroom is inoperable. Um, if somebody smashed through there, it's, it's going to be obvious, all right? One way or the other, I'll know if somebody's hiding in her room. So I don't have to actually cover that sector, which is good. It's one less door to worry about uh, in that kitchen, which is already like a fucking kill zone. If there's a bad guy who decided to hide in the basement, a bad guy out in the freaking living room, craziness could happen. All right, but now we're out here. And we have to cover our way back to where we were and back to business as usual because what if the bad guy's smart? All right, and what if the bad guy made a noise out here, smashed a window, and then real quick decided to shimmy up onto the roof and uh, start coming in, in my bedroom while I'm down here defenseless, you know? Uh, so we're going to have to worry about that. So, back to our fucking gun cam, doom mode, all right? And we're basically, this time I'm going to run it real fast, all the way up to uh, the staircase. I'm going to pause, all right? So here we go. This room's already been cleared. We don't have to worry about it, all right? Hallway, all right? Duck into that bathroom real quick, just double check, all right? Although you didn't hear anything, I know nobody's in there. Pie in that corner, here we go. All right, another double check on that basement. Now, I didn't go in there before. And you don't want to get sucked into a place where you can't escape if you had to. So in this case, eh, shut that fucking door. Somebody's going to have to make noise coming out of it if they're in there. All right, I already covered that, but it's always helpful to double check. If you're another noise, always make sure that weapon follows your eyes, all right? Um, you've always got your peripheral vision available if you're keeping both eyes open. But you want that uh, weapon to be on you, if, right? If you look that way and your weapon is still over there and now you see a bad guy, it's going to take you another second to get over there. You don't want to waste that second, all right? So always keep that weapon where you're looking. 
Here we go back up the staircase. Now this is the real tricky one, right? This is where I, uh, I like to take it nice and slow. Here we go. Fucking kill zone, all right? And I know this. This is why I love having the second floor. It's a fucking kill zone. Somebody can lean out over the banister and pop you, and people aren't used to looking up. So, like, if somebody popped in, first thing I'm going to do is look up the stairs and then maybe check those corners. All right, so here it's going to be tough. i got to fucking rush it. i got to fucking clear both sides as quick as I fucking can. All right, ready? Bam. One side clear. Bam. Other side clear. And now that was some fucking ridiculous shit. Um, and that's probably not the sort of shit that you really want to do. Um, but that's what I got to go through if I want to fucking clear my own kill zone. Um, I want to fucking storm the fucking staircase as quick as I fucking can because it's a fucking kill zone. You got to get out of there quick and make sure that all that sector of fire is cleared quick. All right. And, uh, you know, it, it's rough. Uh, if there really was a bad guy hiding in my room, I don't know how I'd be able to handle it. Um, you know, honestly, and it, it you know, it sucks. So, I might have to revise my whole strategy. Maybe if uh, in the future I hear a funny noise, I just stay up here with my fucking shotgun, aim downstairs um, with my pistol sitting next to me or my rifle sitting next to me, pistol in the pocket or whatever the case may be, and just chill and wait for them to come to me um, because I don't own anything down there. <laughs> it's all my roommate's shit. So material-wise, shit can always be replaced, you know? Um, I know that right now she's not home, so I don't have to fear for her safety. She's at work or partying or whatever she's doing on a Friday night. Um, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just worried about me in this case. So my situation might be different from your situation. You might not be living uh, by yourself. You might have family members, pets, children, all that sort of stuff to look after. When I'm over at my ex's house, she's got a massive staircase with a fucking... Uh, um, uh, loft area on the second floor um so that's stuff like you know that's all sorts of different stuff to worry about um but that was basically a quick rundown of me clearing out my house um if there's specific situations you guys run into um go ahead and let me know uh comment in the comment section below uh let me know if you like it if you think there's stuff you can improve upon um you know i'd like to hear it because uh the more lethal i am the better chance i have of surviving and helping the people with me survive as well so that's good stuff uh, go ahead and like this video if you like what you see. Subscribe if you haven't yet. All right. Uh, I'll talk to you all pretty soon. Again, my name is Joe, and I'm a weapon of mass instruction. Peace. Mwah.